Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, Ad Initio Ad Infinitum. Uh, my name is DK, and I happen to be um, here at Fine Hall in Princeton University. And uh, today I am going to present a proof uh, that I'm very excited about on perfect numbers. At least what I believe is a proof. So. Um, I'm going to skip a lot of things and just walk through the proof and try to get through that as quickly as possible. So uh, bear with me if I don't mention explaining everything, all right? So, but I will mention four things about perfect numbers. Number one is the definition. A uh, perfect number is a positive integer equal to the sum of its positive proper divisors. Um, and so the proper divisors of a number are all the divisors except itself. So the divisors of six are one, two, three, and six, but we don't count six. So it's just one plus two plus three, and that equals six, which equals itself. Um, so that is a perfect number. Uh, now they're pretty rare, um, so they don't occur very often. Um, but things to note, all perfect numbers are composite numbers. Um, and so all composite numbers are expressible as the product of its prime powers. And that's just a reminder real quickly about composite numbers. And then uh, also note that all known perfect numbers are even, all right? So the question that has been around for the last 2,000 years is do any odd perfect numbers exist? And without further ado, I'm going to answer this with an emphatic no. And the reason for this is that the mechanism, and this is what I'm going to prove, that um, generates perfect numbers does not allow for odd perfect numbers to exist. To exist. Now, I have three proofs of this, actually. So I am going to call this proof number one. One, and I'm also going to call this one, this is the shortest proof, the simplest, and I am going to call this Euler's proof. Because in all reality, he came up with it. Um, he just didn't realize it. And uh, as far as I can tell, no one else has either. So, um, what, what does that actually mean? Well, when Euler was studying the perfect numbers, he created a tool, um, a mathematical tool, uh, called Euler's sigma function, also known, I think, as a divisor function nowadays, more generally. And uh, Euler's sigma function is a function, sigma of n, designed to add up all the positive divisors of a given positive integer n. And that sounds similar to the definition of a perfect number, but the perfect numbers only count the positive proper divisors, so not the number itself. And his sigma function includes the positive, uh, the divisor itself. Um, so that's the distinction between them. And 
might be wondering what I was wondering when I first encountered it. I was like, why is he making things more complicated? Why is he creating something else when he's doing this? But um, after a while of uh, looking at it, I realized the sigma function allowed Euler to identify and categorize numbers by their behavior in the sigma function, All right? And so let's just talk about really quickly what a few examples look like in the sigma function. So we have sigma of one, the only uh, positive divisor of one is one, so the sum is one. Uh, sigma function of two is the positive divisor is two, so that's one plus two equals three. Same thing with sigma of three, one plus three equals four. Sigma of four, now we get a little bit more complicated. We have multiple divisors, one, two, and four, so that adds up to seven. Sigma of five is one plus five equals six. Sigma of six is one plus two plus three, which is six, plus six, which is 12. And then sigma of 28 is one plus two plus four plus seven plus 14, which is actually 28, plus 28 is 56. Now, back to this idea of the sigma function allowed Euler to identify and categorize numbers by their behavior, what he found was that there was a specific identity that he could assign to primes. And that was uh, the sigma function for any prime, P, um, where P is prime, uh, P, it would equal P plus one. And we have some examples right here, right? Uh, two is a prime, so we can see here the sigma of two is one plus two equals three, so that meets this identity. Um, and then sigma of three, of course, is a prime, one plus three equals four, and we have five, sigma five, one plus five is six. All three of those primes meet this identity. So what ends up happening is someone could technically say, hey, sigma of 977, I think, equals 978. And so without them saying anything more, you would know based off that result, that sum, that it is automatically that it's a prime, right? So that's the idea is it's giving you information about its identity based off of its behavior within the sigma function, right? And uh, what's uh, really useful here is that there is a unique identity for perfect numbers. And that was sigma of a perfect number, I'm calling it P, equals two times P. And we actually have, I wrote two of those right here on the board, sigma of six, six is a perfect number, and we have one plus two plus three, those are proper divisors, plus six, and that equals 12. So we can see that sigma six equals 12. And then we have sigma of 28, all of these numbers, one, two, four, seven, 14, add up to 28, plus 28 equals 56, sigma of 28 equals 56, two times itself. So both of those meet the identity defined for perfect numbers and they match. So therefore we know they are perfect numbers because they meet this identity. And that vice versa, it only works for perfect numbers. This is a definition of the identity in the sigma function for perfect numbers and only perfect numbers. You will not get anything else. If you get this, it is 100% a, um, perfect number it just says if you get this result this identity is 100% a prime so how do we use that to our advantage um, well let's just start a little bit over again let P uh, equal an odd perfect number now I know I presented that no uh, odd perfect numbers do not exist but we're going to assume for a second that they do exist right so let P equal an odd perfect number and so then immediately we know that the, or in Euler's sigma function, the identity for perfect numbers is sigma of p equals two times p. Now, because, so then we can say that uh, because p is composite,
sigma p can be expressed as the product of its prime powers. I stated at the beginning, right, of all this, and, and, because P is odd, Sigma of P must contain a factor Or two. This part where sigma of a prime power change to some power, some prime to some power is equal to two. And this is where we have our contradiction. Because if you notice, we don't have a sigma function that equals two, that has a sum of two. Sigma of one equals one, sigma of two skips two and equals to three. Why? Because you're adding one, and you're always adding at least one to everything except for sigma of one. So two is skipped. So the sigma of a prime to a power equaling two does not exist. Therefore, odd perfect numbers cannot exist. The sigma function P to the x equals 2 does not exist, does not exist. Therefore, odd perfect numbers. Now, at first, when I first encountered this, I was like, well, wait a minute, how does that work? Because if that was true, then why does it, does it work, does this 2p work for perfect numbers? But that's because if we look at our first perfect number, we can write it as the product of prime powers, s to the 2 times sigma function of 3, S to 
to the 2 is equal to 3. S to the 3 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. And what you see there is in that 4, the 2 here is already baked in to this function. So because the minimum even sigma function minimum even sum is 4. Remember, this is even. And this is all odd. So in order for it to be double, it has to have this 2 on the outside, right? Take any random odd number, 15 times 2. 15 is made up to, of 3 and 5, two odd numbers. Times 2, it makes it 30, right? So the 2 is what makes it even. So whatever this is makes it even, double, but that 2's got to be on the outside, which means it's got, there's got to be a sigma function for the prime of some power that equals 2 in order for this to exist. But as we see, sigma to the power of a prime cannot equal to sigma function of any n, any number, uh, positive integer, does not exist. And that is the first, and again, shortest proof um, that odd perfect numbers do not exist. And again, I'm calling this Euler's proof because really he did all the work. Um, I feel like I just caught something that no one has or I'm missing something. But I don't think so. I don't think so. There's really only three possibilities. I've lost my mind. There's a key detail that I've missed, or B, or C, <laughs> three, I'm correct. This proof is valid, right? So that's the question for you. Do you think this proof is valid? Obviously I'm presenting it, so I believe it's valid. Please let me know if you think so as well. This would be huge because this problem has um, eluded all of the greatest mathematicians um, in the history of mathematics. Alright, thank you, and um, uh, stay tuned. There will be more proofs. I have two more proofs um, for this, um, and I will also be doing an entire series about perfect numbers, because actually beyond the proof, there's an amazing, incredible symmetry um, and ratio um, system behind perfect numbers. Uh, basically, perfect numbers are a special case of a much more general mathematical system. And it's uh, beautiful and fascinating, and I hope you join me um, again. I will be working on posting up that series, hopefully within the coming month or two. Thank you.